Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar about our SAP mobile warehouse management apps. Um, I'm happy that uh, so many of you joined today during the holidays. Uh, we see indeed that a lot of customers are very interested in these kind of scanning applications because it gives them an answer to, to their problems about scanning in uh, the warehouse. So who are we? Uh, my name is Simon de Reper. I am a warehouse functional expert at uh, Flexo, and I'm here to uh, cover the functional part during this webinar. And uh, I am Nico de Lener. I am digital tech expert of today. So for the more technical part of the presentation, uh, I will begin there. Okay, uh, to start some housekeeping rules for today. Uh, so everybody has been put on mute, so you can't talk to us. But what we can do is, of course, is um, use, using the uh, question module to ask questions to us. And uh, we will try to uh, answer them as much as possible uh, at the end of this uh, session. And uh, what we also have to say is th uh, that this session will be uh, recorded. So uh, this webinar is the uh, first one of uh, a bunch of uh, webinars for our uh, Flexo extension series. So um, today, the first one is, of course, the SAP mobile uh, warehouse management apps. The uh, next one, next week on Thursday, it's always on Thursday, is the SAP uh, mobile maintenance and service application. So it's a bit similar, but it won't be WM, but uh, PM. And uh, also interesting to mention is the uh, welcome terminal portal accelerator. It's also very interesting for um, uh, the warehouse managers um, because it will give them insights in uh, the yard trucks that, that are arriving and so on. So also very interesting. So don't hesitate to visit our website and uh, also subscribe to those webinars. The agenda for today. So I will start with uh, the evolution of scanning in the warehouse. Next, um, uh, my colleague Nico will uh, give you so exp some explanation about the content of the accelerator package for uh, warehouse management apps. Um, then I will talk about the typical project approach, approach for these kind of projects. And we will end with a wrap up and some answers to your questions. So the evolution of scanning in the warehouse. In the beginning, of course, there was no scanning in the warehouse. And um, it was only after some, some time that scanning was introduced in warehouses. So um, I will start with uh, presenting you John the Scanner. John the Scanner is an employee in a big warehouse. and. Um, he really likes his job. He likes working in the warehouse, driving the forklift and so on. But the thing that he is missing now is uh, being able to, to scan pallets and to, to uh, get his picking orders in a, a digital way. Because at the moment, he gets his uh, picking orders in a paper-based way. Um, so he is in, in the beginning here. Um, next, you see uh, that um, RF scanning became possible. So this is the next version of scanning. And in the end, um, we, we, we want to help um, John the Scanner with our mobile scanning apps. So John is at the moment, in fact, using our scanning 0 0.1 solution, the paper-based picking, no scanning to be clear. Um, so he gets his picking requests uh, by paper. And um, that's all, um, yeah, um, on, on that paper, he sees the material that he has to pick. Um, and when he picks the material from a certain bin location, then he indicates this uh, bin location on the paper. 
and afterwards he or a colleague processes this paper uh, in the ERP system. Of course, sometimes a colleague forgets to uh, process this paper, which, in, which uh, results in inconsistent stock afterwards in the ERP system, because no instant, instant processing is, um, is made in the system. The productivity is also quite low because they can, for instance, spend five hours on, on picking, but they also have to spend three hours on processing everything afterwards that was noted down on the papers. Advantage is that the implementation cost is low. They will only need a lot of paper, but that is, that's it. Um, uh, the first scanning solution of SAP was in fact subconsole. Um, so people who are al already using uh, for a long time SAP know this technology. Uh, so it, it's based on Telnet. But as you see on the uh, on the screen, on the screenshot on the right, you see that there is no graphical interface. Um, also, additional uh, server infrastructure is needed because uh, you are using Telnet. So that's also quite expensive. And also DRF devices are quite expensive because at this moment in time, it's very hard to find devices that, uh, that support subconsole and the Telnet technology. As an advantage compared to the scanning 0.1, the paper-based one, uh, we can now say that the uh, stock is consistent uh, because you scan everything and uh, everything is handled, handled immediately in the system. And the productivity is also uh, much higher because um, you don't have to process the paper, uh, the papers afterwards. Then um, the, the next technology that SAP introduced was ITS Mobile. Um, ITS Mobile is using HTML, so you can just use your browser um, to, to uh, make use of uh, the scanning, of this kind of scanning. Um, another advantage is that SAP is also um, providing standard scanning applications, so standard applications for picking, put away, queries, and so on. Uh, those are avail available. Um, and ready to, to adjust if needed. Um, on the other hand, we must say, if you are a big company, um, it's very hard to, to have only one type of device. Um, so you have um, multiple resolutions. Um, and this means that you also need to resize all your screens for those devices. So that's, that, that means a lot of work for your IT team also in the maintenance, of course. And as you see on the right, the uh, user interface is also quite old fashioned. The newest technology uh, for scanning applications is Fiori. So this is also the thing that we will uh, sell to our uh, client, uh, John the Scanner, because um, the app design is responsive. They are a big company. They have a lot of warehouses. It's impossible for them to only um, have one type of device. Uh, they also use bigger RF devices in their uh, forklifts and so on. So um, for the IT team, it will be very useful that they don't need to resize all the screens for uh, all the devices they have. Um, you can also use this on any type of device on any, any platform, Android, iOS, and so on, not a problem at all. And the user experience is, of course, as you see on the right, uh, modern. Um, on the other hand, uh, we must say that uh, SAP at the moment doesn't provide uh, standard scanning applications. Um, they only support it up to uh, ITS Mobile, um, so for WM. WM and EWM, you can use ITS Mobile. Um, if you want to use Fiori, you, uh, you need our accel accelerator package uh, for WM applications.
Okay, so the accelerator package, um, what is it then? Um, and I want to um, yeah, start off with uh, a concept that we all know. So there is a concept of the iceberg where you have the top of the iceberg, which is very visible to everyone. And let's say that that is the scanning uh, application itself because that's very visible. Everyone is working with uh, the, the scan device. That's very visible. And underneath the iceberg, you have a lot of um, complexity even you have, um, yeah, that you also need to take into account. Um, and this is where our package, our accelerator is, is working on because you want to focus on what is important, the visual part and the other uh, things underneath you have, uh, we want to unburden you uh, of that. And those are things like, uh, if we have the, the what, what setup do you have uh, currently? So do you have an, uh, a gateway setup on premise? Um, is it hub? Is it embedded? Um, do you have a cloud platform setup or are you thinking about it? Those are things to consider. Um, but how will you connect to the on-premise system then? Uh, also uh, a very important topic. Um, and next to that, you have the important, um, yeah, the, 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 the module itself um, in which you are working. Is it inventory management? Is it extended warehouse management? Uh, what, what is the impact on the solution? Uh, is, it, is it still supported for that module? Things like that. And then last but not least, you have the device and the technology. Um, yeah, what device will I use? And then what technology is supported for that? Or uh, the other way around, what technology do I use to support my device? Things like that. And the, the, those are all very important um, things to, to consider. But we want to focus with our accelerator on what really matters, and that is the optimized warehouse, because that is what you as a customer are looking for. You, you want to optimize your warehouse, and, and that is why we have the UX-centered and fast app development approach, because then um, we can just focus on those things that are important to see what is your flow that we need to cover, and how can we make it happen so that you have your flow um, available um, as fast as possible. And um, our accelerator app uh, package already has a few applications that we can start off with and accelerate with. And uh, to see uh, which ones we already have, uh, Simon, uh, Simon will uh, take us through them. You need to unmute yourself, Simon. Indeed. Uh, so I will guide you through uh, the warehouse um, using our flows. So I will start with the receiving flow in the warehouse. Um, what applications can we use for this flow? And that's, of course, the goods receipt uh, application. So very simple to use. Uh, you will also see it soon in our demo. You just need to scan your handling unit and um, the, the material is received. The stock is in your ERP system. Next flow is the put away flow in the warehouse. So here you also um, have, of course, the uh, put away application. You only need to scan here the handling unit and the system will tell you where to put your, um, your, your handling unit and you can confirm it on that bin location in the warehouse. Um, other applications that are useful uh, for inventory control are, of course, the stock count. Uh, so here you need to scan the bin location and um, the, you can uh, confirm the amount of material or pallets that is on that location. And, and last but not, not least, you also have the uh, search goods application. Um, here you have um, a multiple um, insights so you can you can uh, do it from the uh, bin location for instance so you scan a bin location and you will see the stock the material that is now on that location or you can scan the material and then you will see on which locations uh, the uh, material is placed next is the uh, picking flow so for the picking flow, we need, of course, the picking application. Um, how do you use this application? You scan the, um, the delivery number, for instance, from a, a picking letter or a delivery note. You scan this barcode. Um, then 
uh, the, the system will tell you which materials you need to pick and from which location and uh, you confirm them on, uh, for instance, the goods issue zone. Also here, the packing application can be useful because um, sometimes you need to repack certain goods uh, for shipment to your customer. And then the uh, last flow we have is the shipping flow. Here, when the goods are loaded on the truck, you can use the goods issue uh, application to post the goods issue on that delivery for the goods you shipped. Okay, let's proceed to our uh, demo. Um, so in our demo, we will cover some of the uh, scenarios that are included in our package, not all of them, because they are too many and we only have uh, 45 minutes, of course. Um, another important thing to mention is um, that here you will see that we type in all the barcodes. That's because we are making use of uh, a PC and we don't have a barcode scanner um, here. So this is the reason why we uh, type it in. Of course, uh, when you use it on a real scanner, uh, that's not needed, that's uh, logic. Um, we make use of the Fury technology, of course. So you will see that um, the, 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 um, that the screens are very simple uh, in use. Okay, so uh, let's, for, let's start with the first flow, the inbound flow, um, and let's receive uh, goods. So for this, um, uh, we scan the handling unit of the label that we printed. And you immediately get the message that the goods receipt has been posted in the system. Um, so let's stay in this inbound flow and let's go to uh, the put away. So here we will uh, put away the goods into our warehouse on a bin location. So we start again with the same handling unit number. And we confirm here the handling unit on a uh, bin location. And you get the message that the put away has been completed. Okay, that was the inbound flow. Uh, let's now have a look um, with the search query um, to the bin location AB01, where we placed uh, that handling unit 123, if the stock is really there in the system. So here we enter storage bin AB01. And here we can see the content of that bin location. We see material mod one with a quantity of 18 pieces. And we can also see the handling unit 123 on uh, the uh, also the storage location as, as mentioned here okay so the last flow that we now have to cover is the album flow here we will, we will we will only do the picking so we start with scanning uh, the delivery uh, number the barcode we prov we provide the first material that we are picking um, here we will, we need to pick five pieces. We will pick a little bit less and we, uh, the system sees this as an exception. So we have to enter short picking and that's it. And we can now proceed with the next material, material two. We enter the serial number. And the delivery aspect. Of course, if you don't use serial numbers, then uh, you don't need to use this. Eh? Um, this is a, a sample. Um, so, of course, during the project, we can we can um, add certain functionalities or skip certain functionalities. That's that's of course possible. So we covered the inbound outbound flow uh, during this demo, and we also used the uh, one one of the query applications. So uh, you see that um, Fury is, is, is very simple, very straightforward, of course. Um, updates are also pushed directly to SAP. Um, 
it's designed as as minimalistic and simple and uh, as simple as possible so uh, the amount of, of clicks and and uh, fields that ha that need to be filled in is um, as minimal as, as possible of course so i think our uh, john the scanner will be very happy with with this solution so uh, we've seen the demo that shows us uh, how simple the application can be uh, and how intuitive it can be. Um, there are a few highlights that I want to uh, check with you. Um, and first off, we have the hardware compatibility. Um, so we've seen that it's a web uh, development, so a web application. And this is specifically done because of the fact that it is um, more compatible with a lot more hardware because we are not doing native development here. Um, so we don't need to consider all the different devices. Of course, we have the, the, the browser that we need to take into consideration, but this is something that we take along with us in the project approach. So we have clear steps towards the solution, and this is covered there. Uh, but you have a lot more flexibility in, in devices because you are uh, yeah, going web development here. Um, so that's one thing, that's the hardware compatibility, and then you also have the backend compatibility. Um, it doesn't really matter that you are uh, on ECC still or that you are uh, on S4 HANA or what module you are using. So inventory management, uh, extended warehouse management doesn't really matter because our um, solution is, is module agnostic. So uh, what does that mean, actually? Um, it's not that we, we just plug and play and it works just out of the box. It's just that um, when we set it up, we, we check together uh, with the fit gap analysis, what we need to do to integrate the customer system to the front end. But the front end actually doesn't matter what it is um, providing the, 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 the input to. It doesn't really matter. So that's what we mean with backend compatibility and, and being module agnostic uh, there. And then we also mentioned the UI. So um, in the UI, we, we use Fiori UX, and why are we doing this? Because SAP is really pushing this for years now, and it's a very proven uh, UI technology now for them. And you see this also, their road to S4 HANA is move everything to Fiori. So um, why not just do the same here and, and leverage everything that SAP is doing there? Because SAP um, has a lot of best practices, has a lot of uh, time spent in design principles in Fiori. So leverage that. And on top, um, what we leverage with the accelerator package then is um, the expertise that we have from all the different projects. And we always uh, see, OK, um, how, how can we um, further uh, optimize it so that, that we have the best UX for this? Um, now, the UX. Um, yeah, so we talk about Fiori, and, and then sometimes a question gets popped up, what is the architecture uh, here? And this is uh, the, the most common architecture that you see now, so the on-premise uh, deployment, where you have your on-premise system with your, uh, your gateway, and it can be embedded or hub, it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is uh, a very common one, and uh, a very interesting thing here, most customers, you probably already have it, um, because this is the basic setup in SAP almost. So you can, without having any additional servers, etc., leverage this architecture already. And then there is a second one, which is the cloud one, where you could uh, consider cloud platform. So that instead of hosting the Fiori applications on premise that you, and on your gateway system, that you say, okay, um, I'm going to host them on the cloud platform. So that is also an option that you could go to. And that is also interesting because it opens um, the possibility to have external facing applications as well because of the cloud part, because it's more secure that way. So that's very interesting. And those are the two uh, most common architectures that you that you um, yeah, come across uh, currently. Um, so that's about architecture. But then what is the actual benefits now for you? So for the benefits, we want to look at it um, with two points of view. So we have on the one side our John the scanner because he's working daily in our applications. He really wants to be, uh, well, using applications that are intuitive, that are uh, clear, that are easy to use, and that really support him so that his productivity 
um, is, is going up, that he has less errors uh, or, or mistakes uh, when scanning, that he has less um, administration to do at the end of the day. That's very important. And then you will be very happy. That's one side. But on the other side, you also have um, the IT managers and the, the IT department. We also have benefits for them because it's module agnostic. You don't need to think about, OK, our module, it, it doesn't support this, so we cannot use it. That's, that's a non-issue. Um, and then next to that, you also have the compatibility of the devices. So you have a lot more freedom in what devices to use and, and use even multiple devices in your, in your uh, company. That's all possible. And then uh, one more thing and a very important word that everyone likes to hear, it is future proof. So um, it is on the way to s 4 um, It is using Fiori. It is using the, the, the latest, greatest, let's say. Um, so it is something that you like to hear. So those are all benefits that you can have uh, as a customer. OK, so then let's proceed to the uh um, project approach. Um, how do we deal with this kind of uh, projects? So uh, on the one side, we have our building blocks. That's the accelerator package with our mobile WM applications. Um, on the other side, we have our John the Scanner, our client. And he has, of course, his requirements. And then we combine those two. and. Um, in a fit gap analysis. So uh, here then we have uh, some, some deltas huh? um, and those deltas, we also take them into account um, to develop and yeah? to further adjust our mobile WM applications. Um, all this together is in fact our product backlog our scope, in other words, for the project. And um, of course, we work um, in, in, in small sprints uh, to, in this way to be able to uh, communicate much faster uh, to the client. OK, uh, that was it in a nutshell. So time for our wrap up. And then, of course, the, uh, we will deal with your questions. We as Flexo, we are an advisor, and it's important to say um, that we won't push you to, to, to Fiori, to the newest technology, to our accelerator package. It all depends on some things, on your requirements. Uh, in case your flows are very standard, very lean, um, and um, you, you, are, you are happy with the um, as a with the standard SAP applications, and maybe you are only using one type of device, um, then you can just use ITS Mobile, no problem. Um, it works. Uh, it's maybe not the best or the uh, the most um, um, user friendly design, but it works. Um, that's for sure. On the other hand, um, if you are using IAM. Uh, SAP will never deliver scanning, of course, in IAM inventory management. Or if you are using WM, um, then maybe you can you, you can use our accelerated package because SAP will never um, develop Fury applications for WM. WM is 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 uh, old. EWM is the newest technology, so they will no longer invest in their old platform. Um, but even for the, the, the firms that are using uh, or clients that are using EWM, um, they are also sometimes choosing for our uh, accelerator package for the Fury applications um, because um, Fury um, is, of course, responsive. If they are using multiple devices, uh, they can also benefit from uh, our uh, accelerator package. Okay, so because the, the, the point of this whole webinar is more, uh, the focus of this webinar is more the accelerator, uh, maybe some highlights specifically to the accelerator uh, and what it can do for you. Um, so first off is the quick start in Fiori uh, implementation. Um, it's basically, we have some applications ready. Um, we can implement it uh, at, well, at your system and then see what is the fit gap with what you need. And then we can start adjusting and extending the application. 
And this is a very agile approach and, and gets you started very fast. Um, apart from that, it's like we mentioned, module and hardware hardware agnostic. So it doesn't really matter what, what module you are using. And the hardware, um, it is, of course, taken into account at the start with the workshops, uh, what, what devices will be used. Um, but it, you have a lot of flexibility there. And at the end, we, we really want that John the Scanner, the end user, is really happy in, in his work, in his daily work with the applications, because you will have more accurate stock. You will have better performance uh, and, and productivity. You will have less paper. And, and they will, will not have to do administration uh, at the end of the day because they, they have been working all day and then they have to sit down at SAP, for instance, and, and uh, get in all the information uh, and make some mistakes maybe there. So um, if all that is, is provided to them in, in, a, in a very easy manner and you have an application that is also easy to use, um, because that's important with, with uh, not as much training needed um, as, as, yeah, as with other applications, then that's a huge benefit. And that is where, what we want to highlight with the, with the accelerator package. And I think with those uh, points, uh, I would really like to thank you all for joining the presentation. Um, and that, yeah, we will answer some questions uh, as soon as we can now. And uh, if there are still questions unanswered or you have other, uh, yeah, you want to have more details about the package, then please contact us um, at uh, info at flexo.com and then uh, we get back to you as soon as possible and then we can uh, talk about what it can do for you as a customer. So I think we can move along to the uh, Q&A now. Yes, indeed. Let's have a look at the uh, questions that were raised. Um, at the moment, my Q&A, uh, it's empty. I, ah, OK, there is the first question. Are the apps installed as real apps on an iOS Android device, or do we have to use an uh, industri industrial browser? Uh, that's a question more for you, uh, Nico. Yes. Um, so the applications are not real applications like you have on, on mobile devices. So it's not a, a mobile iOS or a mobile Android, uh, a native development. It is not that. Um, it is a web development. So it runs in the browser. And what browser is used, that depends on the device. Um, it can be a normal Chrome browser, but it can also be an industrial browser. So there, there are some. Um, some pros and cons to uh, using this or using that. Um, but that is covered in the project uh, approach as well. So uh, at the start, we check, OK, what will, will we be using and, and why? Um, so that's covered in that. Uh, and there are multiple possible solutions depending on, on your scenario. You're uh, still muted, Simon. Uh, OK. Uh, so the next question was, uh, are all the apps based on an existing transfer order? So um, um, this is uh, someone who is using WM, clearly. Uh, so indeed, when you are using uh, the, the put away or the picking uh, application, uh, then of course you need a transfer order or in EWM terms, you need a warehouse task to be able to, to, um, to, to, to scan and to confirm certain pallets on certain uh, locations in the warehouse. So in, indeed, the apps are based on already existing transfer orders, correct. Um, then I will look for a next question. Um, the next one in line. Good morning. How much faster is the handling for the operator compared to RF and ITS mobile? Um, Talk RF has a rather old screen. If I got the demo correct, the operator handling time seems to be equally time consuming. Um, well, in, in my opinion, the, the, the screens are 
more simple. So you don't have so many fields and so on. Um, there are less screens also. Um, so uh, I think this is really faster compared to ITS Mobile. But of course, the big advantage of Fiori is, like uh, mentioned, that um, you don't have to resize your screens for uh, all your um, all your devices. So that's already a big advantage. And yeah, of course, um, it's 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 nicer as a user as uh, being John the scanner to use Fury compared to the old screens. Um, so that's for sure. Maybe if I can uh, also say something here. Um, so the 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 benefit in in uh, yeah, performance well, faster scanning here. Um, there, there are multiple steps. So if you're using paper, then of course it is faster. If you're using already scanning, then you cannot uh, well expect that the Fiori technology will will uh, have faster scanning times, for instance, as ITS Mobile, because that won't be the case. That's the same. The fact is that um, you will have cleaner screens and your flow will be much more covered as in how you want it to. Um, this can also be done in ITS Mobile, but it will look better. And like we said, it's not always uh, our, our accelerator, which is the best solution. Sometimes it is ITS Mobile. And it just needs to be uh, considered on what you want to uh, tackle in your company. Next question, what is your advice concerning customers that use IM and want to use scanning? Very good question indeed, because we must say IM, that's not the solution um, for SAP to use scanning, in fact. But um, in, in, in smaller uh, rooms or warehouses, houses, it's, it makes sense to, to have scanning, but uh, WM with all the transfer orders or EWM with all the warehouse tasks and so on are too complex. So in this case, uh, we can position IM as a solution. And indeed, with our Fury application, uh, it also, it's also possible to use scanning. In this case, of course, without transfer orders, without warehouse tasks. So it will be less complex in handling, but um, you can also work, of course, uh, on, on, on your material level with default locations. And, and then those locations are being used um, in, in, in the uh, Fury applications as uh, proposals to put away the goods uh, in IM. But of course, indeed, um, when you have a bigger warehouse, bigger rooms, uh, more complexity, more complex uh, flows, then don't use IM with scanning use WM and uh, for, for now, um, when you do a new implement, implementation, use EWM and not WM because EWM is the, the newest uh, technology for uh, warehouse management and SAP. Okay, next question. So development is via the web browser of the device or via the Fury client application installed on the device? And that's a question for Nico. Yes. So um, it can be both. Um, we use Fury client as well uh, at some of the, the customers that we have. Um, it's, it's very easy to, to uh, enable the, the application with scanning uh, because the Fury client um, offers a bridge between the device and the web uh, application. So it's very interesting to, to have the Fiori clients. But there are also implementations that we have with other um, native, well, other industry uh, browsers, uh, industrial browsers, sorry, or just Chrome. So um, it depends on the devices that you have and what you want to cover. Uh, and based on that, we, we indicate what the best solution is at that point. Okay. Um, and next question is: um, Is it is it not so that the goods receipt app is only available for retail customers? We were looking into this a while ago, but we could not make use of it. Um, indeed, uh, there is a kind of goods receipt application also a standard available uh, for SAP. And indeed, you are right. If I'm not mistaken, that's only for for retail customers. Um, but our goods receipt application. Um, is also built on, on WM and also built on EWM. And this um, 
because the seed application cannot make use of, of those te technologies anyway. So that's only for IAM. So this is the advantage of our good seed application. Next question, uh, goods coming from external suppliers without barcode, how and when do you manage uh, stickers to put it on package and if you need to print just before send parts to clients? Okay, so um, the, the, the part when you, um, when you post the goods to seat can also trigger in the system the print of uh, the labels. Uh, but of course here, um, the, the, the first screen was also scan the handling unit, so then it will be uh, too late. Um, but we can still tweak those those applications, of course. Another uh, possibility would be that you um, you take the inbound delivery as a starting point to post to post the goods receipt, or you post the goods receipt just in the system, which then will automatically trigger the uh, handling unit labels. So those are all uh, possibilities and during the project we can still tweak the um, the applications depending on your flows. So also for instance when you put in an, out, in a, an outbound flow when you put the uh, pallets on the goods issue zone we can set up the system the backend system in that way that um, new labels are printed uh, as of that moment. So this is not something that we put into our Fury applications, this is more something that we put in uh, the, the backend in the WM system and the EWM system. And maybe additionally, um, we, are, we are building scanning applications, of course, but there is always the fallback scenario where you cannot scan something and then you can just type it in because there will always be a moment that you do not have something to scan and you just want to type it manually so that it's that is still there uh, in, the, in those cases. Yeah, indeed. Um, and then the last question that I have here in my list is a question about uh, offline usage of, of Fiori. So more question for you, Nico. Okay, so on the RF Telnet scanning middleware uh, has been put into place to cover the Wi-Fi disconnections, which can be happening regularly. Uh, is Fiori covering this functionality? We do not want to re-log in every time the disconnection. Okay, um, so Fiori does not cover the, the loss of connection because it is a web uh, application, of course. And it, well, you have mobile services where you can uh, incorporate offline usage and offline scenarios, um, but that isn't in the package. Um, there are other options to, to consider. Um, of course, um, we have, for instance, experience where they have some kind of device with them, some mobile Wi-Fi, to allow them to just not lose connection when their uh, warehouse is, for instance, maybe a bit older and outdated in, in, uh, in infrastructure. Um, and then they have some mobile Wi-Fi which helps them to have connection all the time. And of course, the applications, they, uh, they post uh, the, the information always at the time when you, when you scan. So we do not keep uh, information in the application all the time. And then at the end of your, let's say, count, send everything. Because if you then lose connection, you lose everything. But if, if we send it all the time, uh, and you make sure that via your Wi-Fi uh, infrastructure or some some alternatives like mobile Wi-Fi, you you make sure that you have your connection. Then it should be okay. But it will not cover the offline uh, scenarios. Okay, thank you, Nico. Um, that were all the questions that I had in my list. Maybe maybe one thing, uh, since it is a project approach, and if offline is. Uh, something that is really needed, then it just needs to be uh, discussed in, in the workshops, of course. This is part of, of the fit gap. Um, that's the, the plus sign of the accelerator. It is an accelerator and you build on top of it. So it's not, this is what you get and, and nothing more. Yeah. Okay. We still have 10 minutes left. So if you have more questions, don't hesitate to, to raise them to us. I will still wait for some moments.
Okay. Um, so um, then I want to thank you for attending this webinar uh, during the holidays and uh, during also the Corona crisis. So thank you for being here um, and, and uh, don't hesitate to, to attend also the next webinars in uh, this extension series. So please uh, visit our website and uh, check the next webinars. Um, so thank you for, for being here and uh, see you next time.